welcome back to another amazing lesson. This is Jason Hartman, and today we're going to talk about seller financing. You know, you've probably seen these real estate gurus, these creative financing people on uh, midnight TV with their infomercials and so forth, and a lot of them talk about creative financing. Seller carrybacks, where the seller finances the property for the buyer, would be considered one part, probably the major part, of creative financing. But that's such a giant topic. I mean, you could have a whole nother course just on that topic alone of, of creative real estate investing. And what we wanted to do in this course is really give you a broad 30,000 foot level of many different aspects of real estate investing. And this is certainly one of them as we talk about carrying the paper. So our learning objectives will be learn the characteristics of real estate notes. Now when I say notes, I'm talking about a few concepts here kind of interchangeably. Most people talk about it in the in the terms of notes, okay? Just using the word a note on real estate or um, a, or notes, trading notes, buying and selling notes. And uh, you know, a note really means a mortgage, uh, trustee, depends on the locality. You know, they're all, they all have like different security instruments and things like that. I'm using the generic word notes, okay? So this is not meant to be like a legal lecture on this. I'm using the term that kind of everybody uses when they talk about the paper. You know, when real estate is financed, it generates paper. And the paper is usually just referred to as a note, okay? So just understand that. So we're gonna learn about the characteristics of these notes and learn about the difference, and there's a pretty big difference here, between first and second position and really that there could be more than two positions. There could be third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, theoretically, it's not common, but it uh, does happen occasionally. Mostly it's about first and second position notes. And then about the market, the secondary market for buying and selling existing notes or paper that is generated when financing real estate. Now, the characteristics of these real estate notes is, you know, this is the paper. It's a debt obligation that is secured by real estate. And real estate is such a secure asset class, and that's why people get such fantastic financing terms on it. I mean, try and get this type of financing on a business, good luck. <laughs> You're never gonna get it. Real estate has the best financing out there because it is such a secure asset class. And there's this giant secondary market in the world of notes. Uh, of course, the biggest secondary market is uh, the government-sponsored entities like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But there are also much smaller markets where private people and small investors like you and I trade notes and we might buy a note at a discount and make a good deal on it and uh, acquire that stream of payments. So the person who is responsible for paying the note is the one who has borrowed the capital uh, from the note to purchase the property, okay? Well, they didn't borrow it from the note. That's kind of mis mischaracterized. They borrowed it usually from the seller. Now, they could have borrowed it from a private money lender or a hard money lender or a private lender as it's called. I'm certainly a private lender and a hard money lender. I make private loans all the time. It's a standard practice in my life that I'm constantly making a loan on a real estate deal here and there. And in fact, now I've got uh, quite a bit of money out loaned to people on real estate deals. And I like that. It's not as good in terms of return on investment as actually owning the physical asset, but it's pretty good in terms of simplicity. Uh, so it does offer the benefit of being easier to do than owning the actual real estate, which if you do it right, isn't that hard. So the person who receives the payments is the one who has an ownership claim on the property. Now that could be the person or entity really, because obviously that could be a bank, right? Or an institution, 
But in this case, as we're talking about it in this lesson, we're talking about individual investors or small investors, okay? So real estate notes have an interest rate, a time to maturity, and other terms similar to any debt instrument out there. You know, it's not just about the interest rate, but how long is the loan? Does the loan adjust? Um, what is the loan to value ratio uh, when that loan was made? You know, was 80% of the property financed, 90% or just 50%? And that changes the amount of security on that note and how likely the note is to either pay or go into default. And uh, the structure of these payments and the likelihood of default or recovery are both major, major factors uh, in the note's value to an investor. So when that note is traded, that investor who buys that note on the secondary market, uh, and we're going to show you how to do that, by the way. We're going to actually show you a real website that you can go to and buy these notes. They're going to form a lot of opinions based on uh, these things. And one of the other things is what's called seasoning. Seasoning is very important. What does seasoning mean? Well, it's not salt and pepper, okay? It is the amount of time that uh, that borrower has paid on the note and their payment history and whether those payments were current or whether they were late. And so this is another thing to evaluate. And the note business in buying notes on the secondary market, it's fairly complicated. My company, in fact, was really thinking of getting into this business in a big way about two years ago, but we decided not to because we just thought it was, uh, it, was, it was really too complex. Owning the physical asset really was simpler. Now, I wanna differentiate that between what I said just a moment ago because uh, making the loan as the original lender, the hard money lender, that is in the in the scheme of things on the spectrum of complexity and simplicity that's fairly simple uh, i'd say owning the property is kind of the simplest but it does require a little more time because you're dealing with a tenant and insurance and maybe rehab and fix up and so there are some things but buying a note on the secondary market you're buying a note that you're not familiar with so that raises a whole bunch of new issues in terms of seasoning and likelihood of default or recovery, et cetera. And so we'll, we'll go into that a little more. So the differences between first and second position, a huge difference. Now, I have been burned on, uh, I think, just one note. And no, actually two notes, but it looks like that other note I'm going to actually end up collecting on. But uh, I was actually burned on one uh, many, many years ago when I didn't know much and I didn't know what I was doing. And that's why taking a course like this, uh, they say that education is the shortest distance between uh, poverty and wealth, right? So you can avoid making those mistakes and, and learn from my mistakes. And I was burned on a note that was a second position note. And so you're going to kind of see why that's apparent now. And uh, nowadays, I really try to confine my investing to first position because you have, as that lender, the first claim on the property. Now, I do want to make a little caveat to that, though, because actually, usually the first claim will go to the government, either through an IRS lien or a property tax lien. And sometimes those homeowners association liens have a pretty powerful claim. Again, this all varies state to state, okay? So things can get a little tricky there. But generally speaking, first position lenders who has the first mortgage or the first trust deed or the first position uh, note, they have the first claim on the property, okay? And these loans and notes tend to be structured similarly to a bond or a mortgage with usually a long fixed interest rate. Now, they have a long amortization schedule. Let me just take a quick moment and talk to you about amortization. What is it? You might have heard about it before. Well, uh, amortization comes from, I believe, the Latin word that means, uh, that is amort. And amort means to kill to kill the mortgage, okay? That's what you're doing when you're amortizing the mortgage. As the borrower, 
every month you pay part of your payment toward principal, meaning the balance of the loan, and part of your payment toward interest. And in the beginning of an amortized loan, say it's a 30-year loan, you're gonna pay the vast majority will be interest. So say for example, you have uh, payments on this note that are $1,000 per month. Well, maybe in the beginning, the, uh, the payment will be $850 interest and only $150 principal. But after the course of 15 years, that's a long time, right? But it's a 30-year amortization schedule. 15 years into it, you might be paying 50-50 half interest and half principal, so 500 each maybe by then. So the interest is front loaded. So you pay a lot of interest in the beginning and not much later on. Uh, but again, you need to, you can go and find amortization schedules online and, and it's probably worth the exercise actually of just uh, searching that on a search engine and typing amortization schedule and there are many calculators out there where you can put in the numbers and see how that loan amortizes over time it's it's pretty interesting and kind of amazing to realize how little principal we pay uh, in the beginning of the note so second position means you can only make a claim on the property once the uh, superior liens are paid then it's your turn now usually this is just the first position claim but like i said before if the government's got a claim in there that can throw a monkey's wrench into it because uh, because government always puts itself first the government uh, has special privileges as we know so uh, but when it comes to just the mortgages or the notes or the loans second position comes after the first so when you have a second position note you're in a big quandary a lot of times because if the borrower goes into default and say they've defaulted on both the first and the second, well, if they do that, then you have to make a decision as the second lien holder a lot of times. And it gets pretty tricky to make these decisions. Do you let the first foreclose and hope that there's something left over for you, slim pickings, leftovers, right? Or do you make the payments on the first and bring it current so they won't foreclose and then you jump into getting the power position. You get to be in the driver's seat and decide if you in second position are going to foreclose. So again, it's tricky. You gotta know a lot more on the seconds. So the second loans tend to be structured with shorter amortization schedules and they usually have higher interest rates because they have a higher risk of default. Okay, talk about this secondary market. Well, investors are active and it's a fairly small community of investors. It's not like investing in real estate, which there are many, many people doing. But investors, uh, they have the opportunity to buy and sell existing notes that were originated by somebody else, maybe recently or maybe a long time ago. And so the mortgage notes, there, there's really no big centralized exchange for this like the stock market. Now, you certainly could argue that the secondary mortgage market through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are these exchanges, but those aren't really open to private small investors. And I'm going to show you a place in just a moment uh, where you can do this uh, fairly easily if you want to get into this side of the business. So transactions of mortgage notes, they're very fragmented and decentralized and the notes are resold to investors uh, typically at a discount, okay? So if the face value or the, uh, actually I should say the remaining principal balance, okay? The unpaid principal balance, the UPB as they call it, is $100,000, then you might be able to buy this note if it were a first position note for maybe $80,000, just as an example. What will determine the price? Well, <laughs> a whole bunch of complicated factors. Seasoning, the market, the appraised value of the property, um, you know, just a whole bunch of factors go into that. So it, it gets pretty complicated. But suffice it to say, you can buy it at a discount. If it's a second position note, well, you might buy it for 40 or 50 cents on the dollar, a lot less. During the really bad times, 
non-performing seconds became a big asset class for investors and they were buying non-performing seconds. So that's like the worst thing out there, right? Sometimes they were buying those for maybe 10 or 20 cents on the dollar, pretty big discounts, but a lot of them hardly ever recovered. So there's, there's definitely a risk, a risk premium in there that, uh, that justifies the discount. So second position notes, they're discounted more than first position notes. Obviously, they will have a weaker claim, a higher risk of default, right? Non-performing notes discounted a whole bunch, and they could be a non-performing first or a second. Could be either one, right? I gave you the example of a second, but it could be a non-performing first as well. One exchange uh, for notes out there, and a fairly big one, is called FCI Exchange. Now, FCI is a servicing company located in Southern California, and uh, I've used them in the past, and uh, as far as I know, they're a good company, but I just want you to know I'm not recommending them. They're certainly not the only place out there. I'm not really affiliated with them in any way, but I just wanted to tell you about them because uh, they have a platform where you can purchase or sell notes and a servicing department that will collect the payments and help you with the process. So this is their website. And what you do here is you just designate uh, whether you'd like to search for either performing or non-performing notes. And uh, you designate whether you want first or second position. Usually investors specialize in one or two of these things. So, uh, so that's why they have you search for them and narrow down your search, okay? So go check that out and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, pretty easy badge on this one again for you. Articulate a few benefits of seller financing to you and a few benefits to the borrower. Let me help you out with this little homework here, okay? So what are some of the benefits of seller financing to you as the, uh, as the seller of the property? Well, maybe you can get a higher price for your property maybe you don't want to pay a big capital gain when you sell the property. If you sell it on what's called an installment sale, you can pay taxes slowly rather than all at once potentially. And again, I'm not a tax advisor. Consult with the appropriate professional, a CPA or an enrolled agent who really knows the tax code, okay? But that's one thing. Um, you know, you can make your property more attractive to a wider field of borrower or buyers and also borrowers uh, because uh, it's more attractive if you offer terms and you can get a higher price. So there are benefits for both you and the borrower. What about the borrower? Well, maybe the borrower uh, can't qualify. Maybe they have some bad credit or their credit is dinged up in some way. Maybe they chose to do some strategic defaults. Well, what is that? Millions of people did this. They uh, decided to intentionally default on their mortgage during the Great Recession to either get a loan modification or a short sale or a workout or maybe just so they didn't have to make payments and they could intentionally let the property go and uh, live in it for free in the meantime. Millions of people did this. So there are a lot of people out there with bad credit who are otherwise good borrowers. They just sometimes made a strategic decision or maybe during the recession just ran into hard times. So uh, lots of ways this can happen. You know, maybe uh, they want some special terms that aren't available uh, through bank financing, maybe a lower down payment or some other special characteristic. Okay, so use, use the template, articulate some of these benefits to the buyer and the seller or the borrower and the lender. Again, the seller usually being the lender and the buyer usually being the borrower. In this case, those terms are a little bit interchangeable. And then upload a screenshot of the document and you'll get your badge and I'll talk to you on the next lesson. Hey, congratulations for completing module five. Here, you discovered the power of pricing dynamics, sales economics, you did a strategy for selling your property to owner occupants and a strategy for selling your property to investors. You also went over a bunch of the benefits of seller financing. 
to you and the borrower. So now let's move on to module six, where we'll talk about our overall strategy of real estate investors. You should be happy because we're on the home stretch. See you in module six.